The reports came to us on social media that a young 20-year-old girl, Destiny, passed on after she attempted to have a procedure that's the Brazilian butt lift. Um, according to this tweeter from Dr. Peckin, um, she was supposed to de develop the difficulty in breathing and then, unfortunately, she passed on. Since then, many have blamed celebrities for this, saying that they're the ones that are constantly showing the uh, Brazilian butt lift success of their stories and um, the various how much they've paid and how beautiful they look. And they've put this picture out there to young people. And now young girls are following them and are doing exactly what they're doing. And now, unfortunately, this girl has died. Do you agree that celebrities should take the blame for this? Um, do you feel that a, a surgery such as this was not necessary for a young girl. Well, see, she's an adult, according to our constitution. She's 18 years old. She's 20 years old. So uh, as an adult, do you think it was her decision to make? And do you think there should have been a parental influence somewhere here? What are your thoughts on this? These are things that parents have to face, family, loved ones have to face. And now celebrities are being put in the loop because according to them, they're the ones that can afford it. And they're flaunting it. And young girls seem to feel that they can also have their life. What are your thoughts on this? You can call us on 081270. 536870913907694. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweet. So a celebrity Yetine Bakare was criticizing people saying that why would you be blaming us for for this? It's, I mean it's wrong. You should be talking to the parents. The, the parents are responsible for this. What are your thoughts? Let me start with you, Maram. Oh, okay, you know what's interesting? I'm happy that we're talking about it because um, there's just the celebrities also, I mean, the Nigerian celebrities should not feel particularly attacked. It's celebrities worldwide who are influenced by Nigerian celebrities, who are in, influenced by Hollywood celebrities. So it's just the way of the world right now. Yeah. And um, first of all, this is a sad occurrence. And I've heard many times over, because I like to watch all these you know, documentaries and videos, and I've heard many times over by reputable doctors, these some of them say they refuse to carry out this particular surgery, these BBLs, because they are the deadliest surgery to ever do. Um, they say that because that fat that they take out of you, you have to be very careful and it's quite delicate because the moment it goes into your blood bloodstream. bloodstream, that's the end of you. And, you know, it's just a little mistake and that can happen. So for me, I feel like why then put yourself through that. But I guess when you see people's success stories over and over again, you, hope you, you think that maybe those people are just pessimistic, you know, why would my own be different? Yeah. But um, on the other hand, I am seeing people who have been the, the face of BBLs advising people not to do it. In fact, last week, I watched two ladies. So there's Black China, I don't know, but yeah. many people know her. She's taking out a lot of her silicone and a lot of her fillers and a lot of her surgery that, and advising people not to do things like that. Um, there's this other YouTube person too who has said that she got the BBL by mistake. She had gone to the doctor for surgery and said she wanted a flatter tummy, but then he thought he should put whatever he took out in her derriere so that she looked a certain way. She said she didn't like it, but she definitely flaunted it and looked nice in all her outfits. But she's saying that, you know, this is not something she would encourage anyone, especially young people. Young people are easily influenced. Um, 20 years, she's not even the youngest I've heard, you know, have it. I've heard of 18-year-olds, and I'm talking of Nigerian girls and 19-year-olds. Yes, we may say blame the parents, but the kind of 18-year-old, 19-year-old, 20-year-old girls that do this usually are financially empowered. Yeah. Um, anyhow, for, they for, make the money. anyhow, they make it. So they have the Brazilian hairs, the human hairs, they have... They do the trips. Um, there are so many kinds of jobs now, you know, on social media influencing that gives them that kind of money. And some, you know, legal, some illegal. But they, are, they have that, they have the means. And sometimes when young people have the means, they don't necessarily listen to their parents. And you're thinking, I'm an adult, I'm yeah. in university, I'm doing let so many let things let me, on my own anyway. Let me stay on that so point, I, Mary, okay. Because you said something really important. Mm. I was talking to a parent recently, an older parent, and she's having these kind of issues. Not, not exactly this, but. She was just complaining about the kind of things that her kids are doing, her teenagers. Um, she has a 20-something-year-old and an 18-year-old. And she was just like, she's at the point where she is right now. Whatever they do, that's their business. Because she has done the best she can. 
You know, it, it, she said she was depressed for some time. For years, she would be crying and praying and fasting for these children. But yet, they live abroad. And they, and they have made some certain choices. I'm not, she didn't tell me exactly the choices, mm -hmm. but she was really careful to just say that they made some choices that she's not proud of. Hmm. You know, she's embarrassed. She doesn't she's talked to them. She has gotten family to talk to them. Her friends talk to them. But yet, two of them have gone the opposite direction. I don't know what it is. But these are some of the things that teenagers do, young people do. And yeah. because it's a new world out there. Yes. And she has to come to the point where she says, Morel, I have to just accept that in the world we're in right now, no matter how good I have raised these children, in the world they are being influenced yes, by the by community, everything. the society where they live in. And I just have to accept yeah. whatever it is they become. So in this kind of situation, so let me come to you now. This, she's 20 years old. Now, you know in Nigeria, 20 years is a child. <laughs> yes. Me, at, when I, was, I told you that when I was 16, my brother was celebrating by 16. I said, okay, get it ready to yeah. start paying phone bills by 18. Auntie, get, they get out of my house, you know? Okay. So at 16, a, a teenager in the U.S. already been, you already been an adult. Yeah. By 18, you know that dad, you, stay, you want to stay in the house, you hold some bills. But here, at 20, you're still home. So how do you think parental influence worked here? We, we could have helped or... You think he's an adult? She she made her decision, and we should just live by her decision. Honestly, raise, uh, raising children is uh, it's there's really no there's nobody that has like the script or the template for doing this. There there are some guidelines that can help out, but um, yesterday was it yes, like the past few days, my kids want to they want to dye their hair. <laughs> I, I just want to I'm not dyeing my hair again. <laughs> so um, I want to dye oh my, my hair. Oh my goodness! I want to can can we dye our I hair gotta take the that break? In. What? Um, yeah. I said, which break? Is it break after you finish secondary school? Oh, after or university. break after university? I don't understand. Which break? He said, like, during summer break. I said, what do you want to dye? What color do you want? Somebody said orange. Somebody said blue. These are my... 11-year-old. 11 to 7-year-old. Dibu Samuel wants to dye his hair orange. I said, okay. Fantastic. We will discuss this after you finish secondary school. You know, there are some, th there's some things that I already expect yeah. that my kids would want to weave their hair. It's because every, I'm seeing they a lot of people, they, they have hair, everybody around with kids, children around that 17, the 18. Is changing. That's the fashion. A lot of guys are weaving their hair. So I'm wondering, okay, what, what can I take? What would I be able to, what would I say? These are the things I can take. You can weave, don't dye. Mm. You, can, you can lock, don't do this one. Yeah. Don't put speeds and stuff. Your... So I'm preparing myself to be able to negotiate and let them know there's still freedom, but with caution. Mm. Um, I think that as this girl, mm. such a beautiful young girl, mm. you know, and that's the thing. We, we have been so acculturized by what is on social media, not to appreciate how we look, and even adults struggle with it. Mind you, if I had the money, I would consider the surgery. Absolutely. That's the truth. And that's not because my, my husband doesn't say he likes the way it is, or every, people are complaining. It's just that I see online, bim, belay, concave, you know, and I'm like, ah, the dresses would look nice if I look like this. So it is, the pressure is real, and we need to constantly, it's, it's like um, what, what we, we people, coaches and all of us say is, everything in life speaks to you. What are you saying to yourself? And you must build your inner voice to always tell yourself the truth over and over again to drown out what every other thing is telling you. You get to tell us, please, that your hip is clinical, your, but you know, you can do this over and over again. Um, I have a makeup client that I used to do makeup then for who did surgery. And how did she do surgery? She met, it was where she does her body scrub, that she met someone who had done surgery and was looking amazing and um, the, she, over and over again in the past, like it was a six months priming period that they were always interested in. And she just liked the person's body. And she kept feeling like if this person was able to do her body and she was perfect, I can also do it. She got the person's contact, traveled and did the surgery. Okay. But we are being shaped by but the so world's but definition but of what beauty but is. But and there are complications that we are not taking cognizance no. of. And people are wishfully thinking that I will be among the few percent that had no obvious complication, yeah. but there's nobody that does not have complications. But you see, if an adult, a 40 something year old, who is accomplished, who has the children. money, she has had her kids, <sighs> and she's done with life, and she's like, you know what, I'm just you enjoying myself. <laughs> and, she's, and she says, you know what, I want to do this. Absolutely. If you want, and if you die, it's a decision. We will I mean, yes, we'll feel bad, we'll miss you. But you, as you're going into under the knife, you knew that there's a possibility you might not come back alive. That's an adult decision. Or a 20 something year old who hasn't even started her life at all, probably doesn't have a proper job, maybe she does, you know, probably hasn't even had plans for the future. The conversation should be how do we get young people who are just starting out life to dissuade? 
from this kind of life-threatening decisions. You know, some will say the other life-threatening decision, like, like traveling abroad is a life-threatening because you don't know which country you're going. You go to, you go to a country where something happens and you get killed. You know, anything can be a life-threatening decision. We don't know. But how does a young person understand and see that this is not a necessary decision at this time, no matter how beautiful it will make me look? So, you see, conversations like this just make me understand, have a deeper appreciation and understanding for parenting and why it is necessary, even when it, people will say, oh, it's not cool, oh, I'm 18 now, I'm 20, I'm 21, or a deeper appreciation of African parenting, let me mm. just put it that way, Complete. or traditional parenting, uh, which is, I am your parent, I know better than you, what I can see sitting down, you cannot <laughs> see, even if you're standing on top of an Iroko tree. And it's because... I've seen it so, play out in so, um, so many times where you have a young person and then you add in fame or you add money, you know, it's just most times come, it's like a bad mix. Mm. We've seen it mainly with athletes, footballers. Mm. They're usually really young, 18, 19, 20, 21, mm -hmm. and then they're making millions of dollars. And all of a sudden, you're like me, that just came out of this Surulere street. Mm -hmm. Look at who I am right now. And you want to just ball and do the most. Yeah. Um, some people are lucky. They can make these mistakes and then even have enough time to change their lifestyle and still enjoy their adulthood. Some, so many also have lost their lives while making those mistakes. Um, and so when you have... Um, parents or adults who seem to be a bit more strict on you and still insisting because whether we like it or not, it's hard to be a child or hard to be a young person when you're surrounded by all the distractions mm. and your parents or the adults in your life represent old school, represent not knowing what's, uh, what's in with the times, they represent not being forward thinking and open minded. So it's hard to to, when you have a child that understands and appreciates that, understands the balance, okay, I know my parents. So what I say to my, my children is, just believe that I have your best interest at heart. Sometimes it may not sound right to you. Sometimes it may not feel good. But you know I love you. And nobody in this world loves you more than I do. And I only want the best for you. So sometimes, even if you don't get it, just trust me. So you just pray that you have a child that can trust that. Because I wanted to, I wanted to uh, dig further on with you. But let me go on a break. When I come back, we'll continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. All right, so there are two parts of this conversation. Before you went on a break, you're talking about, you know, our children growing up. It's always important to see that putting our own kids in this, that you're becoming an adult and your children are now asking you this question, Mommy, please, I want to have a butt enhancement procedure. I need a liposuction, you know, because I want to look pretty. And they're having to face a, a young girl where she's just blossoming and she's getting to her career and she might be in a career that needs this. Hmm. There are young girls, if you're working in an office, nine to five, you don't need that. But if you're in the entertainment world, so where roles you. are dependent on how beautiful and gorgeous and attractive you can ah. be, a young girl is saying, you don't want her to achieve her dreams. You know how kids these days, mommy, this is my dream, this is my, this is my life, I have to just do this, I, have the, I found the best doctor, you know. And, and she's your child. Let's put yourself in the, <laughs> in the parents' I shoes. Don't know what you're saying. Very nice. Yeah, you know you I think that there's, there's no industry that requires you to become a different person to fit in. Um, what no, used no, to be no talk about back there? They used to make yeah, and people yeah, and people. What and, um, they do there is you lose weight. Anorexia. 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 Yeah, they, 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 they don't eat to maintain their size. But even that, they realized was a. He, he, he gave many, many people trauma for years that the industry, they revolted within the industry yeah. against it. Yeah. So, for, okay, for me, what I'll say is, one, no, no, no career should make you um, change who you are to fit in. Of course, there's proper grooming. Um, I was saying, somebody was saying, I said, I'm trying to um, keep fit and lose weight. And they said, oh, you're not fat. I said, well, I'm, I'm on TV. I can, I, there are things that you just, personal grooming. I want to be good, look yeah. good for myself. But we ought to differentiate there are things within your control eat right you know walk out even in the hollywood of the hollywood the biggest stars look at them the ones that win the oscars they are not surgically um, enhanced. enhanced people the real stars i'm not saying the the ones that became star from doing um, okay, well, Kim, 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 that's influencing uh, influencing i'm not talking about Instagram i'm taking the real actresses and actors. actors actresses the ones that made a career out of being on on tv they kept their their, their body and we've seen what happened to their brats. Have you seen 
the, the brat, the, this yeah, old the rapper. Yeah. rapper, what she looks like now. Um, what's this um, Kim? What does this Kim oh, something? Lil Kim. Lil Kim. They look, look different. horrible, not different, <laughs> horrible. So we must understand the fact that there are good, bad, and there are bad sides. And they, you, you cannot, you can't, you're too young to expose yourself to these things. I, I would also blame, well, let's not just blame influencers online. We must blame, in Nigeria, blame Big Brother. You see, when we do these shows and you see young people come in with those shapes, it's, a, it's like you are, a, 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 and, and we see them stay in the house for so long and is, their shape is all, all into your face. We are encouraging things. It's subliminal, but we're pushing a narrative that this is what we like, this is what we see. Movie producers, immediately you do your shape like this, the producers will give you more, more roles. Um, act, the directors will give you more roles. You see them blow. They get more followers. So we are unconsciously as a society encouraging fake life, fake body, fake everything. And we need to start dialing down on these things. Because if we don't, we will continue to have cases like this where young people, their lives are cut short. And we, we, sadly, we take these things where people die. Mm. We take it. We, the last time there was a, another person that died. with so many that have so died so in Nigeria. people are dying. <laughs> but can we talk about the challenges, because people come online and just post I their so. body. Yeah. But there are several I... challenges, getting through recovery, mm. being able to afford the process. Ah. All right, so now, <clears throat> influencing is here to stay, whether we like it or not. Mm, we can't. Our young girls, our young boys will be influenced by what they see, what they hear, the music they listen to. So how do parents begin to understand how to guide their, their young ones in this? As we said, Yes, you, no career should ask you to change who you are. But whether we like it or not, we are in the world. There's, the fact, there's an economy of influencers. Yes. So, so that, that there's a new world out there, which we have to just accept. Our children, our kids are still young now, but they're going to be 18, they're going to be 22. Hmm. And they might be influenced by this whole machine, this perfect body look in yeah, the future God when we're growing up those pamela anderson remember yes. she had the boobs yeah. i don't know why i don't know how those boobs are doing today so she will be there so uh -uh. point is, so then she was one of those few if they watched to see her around the show. yes <laughs> they then gradually with but now it's mainstream yeah. then it was just pamela anderson and a few here and there mm. but now it's mainstream. everybody has got some kind of surgery mm -hmm. if i had money i'd do some surgery too wow so see mariah you're so right whether we like it or not People will be influenced by what they see. And it, we have a long history of how it has always happened. I know you were talking about modeling earlier and you were saying, you were saying it's different, but it was the same because some people will starve themselves to the point of death yeah. because they wanted to look skinny. like, yeah, they wanted to be really skinny. And after a while, like I said before, if a child has money, if you, someone that you're raising has money, there's really so much you can still influence or, or determine in their lives. Mm. They will eventually make their decisions. I don't know many people who can say to their parents, I want to go and have a boob job or a, a yeah. bomb enhancement. Many people, children just show up to their parents and their parents are wondering, something looks different about you. <laughs> you know, there are a few people who have that kind of close Not relationships. Yet. I've even heard the parents who go with them but you hear even of husbands and, and wives, where the husband say, I, want, I have nothing to do with this. If you do it, you do it at your own risk. Don't tell me, don't do this. Because many people don't want to be even accused of, the, of playing any role in put, making you put yourself you know, under such a risk. I think what we will just tell our children and all the young ones growing up is, whatever you do, consider your health. That's it. Consider your health. Make sure that it's not something that could cost you your health forever or, you know, your good health or your well-being. And make sure it's not something that could take your life. And maybe if they have that understanding. Um, and about the career asking you to change yourself. I remember this story. I don't know how true it is, but it was said that Will Smith, when he started off, he was also trying to be encouraged to do some um, new nudity on TV. And that Denzel Washington called him and said, if you do one and you think, okay, I'll just do this one, do the second one, before you know it, you'll be known as this sort of person. Like you have enough talent and personality to go as far as you want without putting yourself in that box. And so sometimes you need to be, um, you need to take that stand for yourself and, you know, for who you are and who you believe in and say, you know what, no matter what it will cost me, this is who I am. And what happens with people like that is eventually the kind of jobs and the sort of person and kind of thing that you stand for 
those things will come and look for you. In the beginning, as, and as I said again, as being young, we are afraid. Time, for young people, we feel like time is passing by. For a young person, six months is a long time. So it's like time is going. I need to be able to plug into every opportunity that happens. But they need to understand that you can take your time. We think some things, and then there are some things that they just take too much away from you. There's yeah. no need to go there. I think we'll wrap up with that. Mm. But I mean, in a, in a nutshell, I mean, our hearts go out to this girl, young, her family, her loved, her loved ones. I mean, really painful death for a 20 year old to die under the knife because she wanted to have this. Um, it was after recovery. It was during recovery. It was during a few recovery. days after. Well, I thought it was the process, during the procedure. But, um, I mean, really, in a nutshell, really, parents pay more attention. The truth is that we have to face this. We want to wrap up. Yes, if people want to do the surgery, please, um, I know that there are cheaper people offering these services within Nigeria, but the risk is high because we did, many of these people don't do enough pre-medical check. This girl came out of the surgery and she had breathing problems. It could be from anesthesia. It could be from pre-existing condition that probably shouldn't, she shouldn't have got to Some people are saying that fat that went surgery. into her bloodstream. Okay. So that could be as a yeah. result, that's a botched surgery. Yeah. So the possibility for either way. way. Apart from the profession, because it happens everywhere. So let's not make it like these incidences happen only in Nigeria. Yeah. It happens even with the most experienced doctors. Yeah. So it's yeah. such a huge risk. But I think what we'd never hear about is the recovery process. One of the ladies that I said talked about her surgery. She says that the pain you get from doing a BBL is the worst kind of pain and that she doesn't even wish it on her enemy. Mm. But they never say that. You know, we only push the after when yeah. we can wear the dresses and show the pictures. But you need to also understand what you're getting yourself into. I mean, it's, in, it's, it's really interesting. I've been trying to hide mine for, for years. I know, right? <laughs> like, I'm, I mean, I tried to, I'm, I'm covering it up. I didn't realize it's such that people were paying for. I mean, I would have You been, guys know me now. Like, if someone mentions, oh, William, is that you're behind? I get so upset. Yeah, yes, no. Don't say it anymore. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm here covering it up. I'm acting all like, uh, you know, speaking you there. there. <laughs> that was, don't they tell your brother, they say, we should give Ryan a ship. You say, ah, Ryan will be like, no, 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 please. Let's hide it. Hello, good morning. I have Toby, I have to wrap up. Good morning, Toby, are you there? Good morning, ladies. You're live. Go ahead, please. Uh, I just wanted to, to make a quick contribution. Um, I mean, if you're doing a plastic surgery, if it's uh, medically induced, so if you're doing it because there is a medical reason or there's a medical need, a life threatening um, reason for it, I think that is okay. But for a lot of people who do the BBL, Cosmetic. you know, just for, you know, for statement's sake, or for trade purposes, I think they need to begin to rethink these things. You know, I've heard of people um, who, who, who go to do the surgery on a human plan. So they go mm -hmm. to some places and tell them, come and do this. Of and course. then when you start making money from me, then you can pay me that. <laughs> yeah, I've heard those. Do you understand? I've heard yeah. of ridiculous stuff. I've also heard of places where they go to this, they tell them, come and do this, I'll give you 50% discount. Yes, I've seen discount. those. But you, you should begin to question such, you know, intention. Why are you doing it? Why is somebody subjecting you? I mean, even if it's, if it's, if it's, um, if it's trying to extract your team, it's a 50-50 survival chance. You know, you have weeks on your finger. It's a 50-50 survival chance. Why do you want to put yourself on the table? You know, why do you want to kill yourself just because you want to have big bones, tiny waist? <laughs> Are we part of the future? And our parents need to, you know, I mean, this goes beyond parents. Society at large. Yeah. We can't keep losing young people who are supposed to hold for, uh, you know, the, the economy of the country tomorrow. We can't keep losing them on the table, on the, on, you know, on the table of, you know, some, some I, I don't even know how to describe it. I get you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. I think we we're going to wrap blame up one that. group of people. <laughs> There's a group of people we forgot to blame. Which? The men. Yes. <laughs> ah. yes. There are some men that actually deserve to be blamed. I don't know about some, but there they are many. <laughs> should, we, should we blame them after No, this? let's leave no. them. Let's leave.